Okay, here we are. A little late. It's been uh, chaos. We are back up and running. Uh, if you didn't know, Larry Nichols was our hour one guest and revealed some uh, astounding information. Also gave his views on the Islam religion, not necessarily mine. And the uh, Obama administration, the NSA, the CIA, somebody knocked us off the air. And they did it in a very sophisticated way. They went right into our master control remotely and separated the outgoing broadcast from its connection, which carried it to our distributor. That's unheard of. This is extremely high-level stuff. And what I hope to do, is, if I live long enough, is put Hour 1 and Hour 2 up as a free listen, commercial-free, by tonight. That's the plan. You deserve to hear these programs. Uh, obviously, Larry Nichols uh, is not a favorite. He said on the phone that two black suburban SUVs pulled up in front of his small house and just parked there to let him know that they were watching. And uh, this is a man who is, is dying of lung cancer. Not a joke. All right, we will be uh, doing this hour as we always do and uh, trying to bring you up to speed. I uh, can't get hold of Yochi, but uh, we've got Dana here. I don't know how we got lucky get, getting him, but he's there. Are you there, Dana? Thank you, Jeff. Yes. Yeah. All right. How are you? How, how are, People want to know how you're doing. How are you? What's the status of your arrest and the other crap? Uh, a little stressed out, probably too much stressed out, but that's okay. Sometimes that's the way it goes in this. Oh, yeah. Uh, we went down to court, and they didn't have my name on the screen. So normally when you go to court, your name shows up on TV screens. Until you weren't on the docket? Said, you weren't even on the docket? I wasn't on it. And so this was obviously a game they were playing. Now, the police officer who filed the charges against me, the same guy who called the police to come down and check and said I was suicidal. Right. Right. That, that same guy, he was lurking around. Now, I didn't know what he looked like, but they've seen this office, police officer lurking around about a uh, quarter after eight at a uh, minute to nine or so when he's supposed to be sitting in front of the judge waiting. Otherwise, you're missing, you know? Right. And I was the whole time I asked every single person there, nobody knew anything about my case. And so... What? Up to me. Yeah, nobody knew my case. That I existed. And so he came up, uh, this police officer approaches us, who's been stalking us for about 45 minutes, now approaches us. Yeah. And asks us, and says, hi, Dana. You're Dana. And I said, yeah. He said, uh, have you got a lawyer? I said, uh, no, not yet. He said, would you like to come down to the police station and give a video statement? And I said, no, I'd rather go see the judge because that'll, you know, I'll be missing. Yeah. He said, well, you're not, you're, yeah. He said, you're not on a list because I, did, I didn't put you on the docket. And then he takes off and puts me on the docket when I tells him to take a hike, because I told him to take a hike. You're kidding. No. This is so this is justice in Canada. Wow. Yeah, and that's something. And so it was really, that was really worse, and that really rattled me, and that still worries me significantly that he was able to do that. And so the prosecutor didn't see my docket. The judge didn't get a chance to read it. Unbelievable. He, yeah. This this is being orchestrated from an extremely high outside level. Yeah, it is so. He's probably yeah. military, ex-military, ex-Navy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that was, uh, it got pretty heated between me and him. And then again, when I was leaving the courtroom, he got in my face again. And I said, you know, maybe you'll come to your senses and drop these charges, come over to the good side. And him and the prosecutor blew up laughing at me. And really? He said, yeah, he, he said, you can't go calling for hanging in Canada. And I said, you can. He said, no, you can't. I said, yes, you can if you call for And I said, you left that sentence out where I says you got to do it legally. And I said, when the judge hears the whole audio, the whole video, you ain't yeah. got a leg to stand on, do you? And he said, you still can't call for him and you can't. And I'm just making fun of his voices now. And I said, well, lucky for us, uh, you don't get the last say the judge does. You So it was pretty heated exchange in the courtroom. He said, you can't call for a hanging in Canada. It, you're not yeah. speaking... Literally, you're speaking figuratively. Right. I said we had to change the rules so we can hang these types of people. Of course. As, as a deterrent. 
even our, our former uh, president, Bush, Herbert Walker Bush, George, number 41, said, if they knew what we were really doing, they, the people, would hang us in the streets. <laughs> it's the truth. Oh, yeah. You better believe it. I just so like, this guy kept you off the docket yeah. and tried to get you to go down to the police station to get... Oh, you now really here's, here's a good one. He told me he watched going. 500 hours of my video. <laughs> What's said, that? Five, he told me he watched 500 hours of my videos. 500 and he, hours. And he only found, oh, yeah, he only sure. found a couple of sentences to salacious. Now, they stalked me for the last year and a half. Woods Hole worked in tandem with the FBI to put me on a terrorist list. And so yeah. then they started checking all the packages at Woods Hole. Yeah. Then they worked in tandem with Canadian RCMP and UVic to put me on our version of a terrorist watch list. And then they used that to stalk me for the last, uh, this is in a disclosure, for the last year and a half. And they also used it to uh, get YouTube to use draconian software algorithms to silence me on the Internet. And so this included everything from subscriptions to thumbs up to ratings to views to comments to uh, unsubscribing people from my site. These people went to work on me for the last year and a half. I mean, they called up every hotel that I was at along the coastline and told them I was a fraudster and that I was taking people's money. And I was, uh, uh, these, which was, these, uh, these are the cops doing this. Well, I don't know if that part was the cops or not. Somebody. But that was that same network. That was probably... Yeah, uh, Woods Hole and Uvic, no doubt, you know. I got and, it. And yeah. yeah, no, these people have been working in tandem with each other for a year and a half. And that they're watching every single one of my videos, waiting for me to say something. And that's what took them so long to finally arrest me. Was I thought they finally found something which was innocuous and normal? I'm getting a little excited there. Was you know, I'm allowed freedom of speech. In Canada, you know, and, yeah. all it was, Dana, I I didn't get to that part of the video, but I read I read enough about the video. You, with every good reason in the world, became exasperated with the lies that are going to end up killing people, men, women and children. They're liars. And you called for something figuratively, I, not literally, to I be done to these point. people. Yeah. I, I tried to, you know, originally I didn't call for hangings, but these people got all attraction. And so at some point I became, I realized 100% that there was, they were never going to stop. There was no accountability. And I always realized that, I guess, in every sense. But yeah. it got to that point where... I couldn't believe it. Constantly, the same couple of people were in every single media. And I'm not even allowed to talk about it, but they're the only ones in North America that gets any traction. But I'm not allowed to criticize or defend myself. And so you had all this. Now, you know, it's such an insignificant thing when you really think about what they got me charged with. But yet the Global Mail come out and publicly flogged me to Canada's biggest newspaper. And I mean, took it completely out of context. CBC does two interviews, 20 minute interviews where they don't even quote me. Japanese time comes out and totally stomps me into the ground the day, night before the trial or the, the second court appearance. And so, but they still don't have a leg to stand on. They don't still don't have any kind of a moral compass and they still don't bother mentioning that I took a couple of hundred thousand pictures that I'm not just some random person that I'd done the entire coastline, 15,000 miles of it, as you very well know, and supported yeah. me endlessly. Yeah. But yet they bothered, they, the media didn't bother saying that, that I was, they just call me a internet loony or something. And so, yeah, that was about smearing me and wrecking me and trying to, yeah. try to save a couple of assets. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I disrespect them for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you should. There's scum. Uh, that was shocking, yeah. This uh, UVic, uh, I don't want to mention any names. I uh, will just keep it <laughs> the same. But the people who are speaking out of UVic uh, have been and are lying to the public on the public payroll, by the way. And they are going to cause the deaths of uh, untold numbers of innocent people over time because of their lying. Right. Woods Hole uh, is... Also lying and covering things up. 
And that is going to result in the deaths of people who think it's it's okay to eat ocean fish, crabs, lobsters, all kind if they can find any. There's virtually nothing left. And that's that's the biggest lie of all, the cover up of that. Oh, it's an extinction event. Oh, it, it's the, the North Pacific Ocean was the world's most prolific producer of food uh, on the planet. It's it's now dead, untouchable. It is. You yeah. can't eat anything out of it. And the half-lives of the, some of the radioactive nuclides, these, these nuclides, will uh, 50,000 years, 100,000 years. Yes. This is over, ladies and gentlemen. And that the Pacific over. Ocean is connected to the other oceans. And yes, this stuff is going to spread. It is potentially a planetary extinction event. We I don't got, have any other answer for you. That's the truth. It, no, it is because you're supposed to have the 5,600 species I talk about. And if they went missing, those 5,600 species would be heavily uh, manifested throughout the ocean ecosystem itself and would just recede the coastline. Yeah. And so when they don't recede the coastline, the other 4 million should. And when they don't recede the coastline, it's because the entire ocean is already dead. And then the only species we we recognize are the ones like the mammals, which and they have been completely decimated, and that there is nothing on the coastline from the survivor. And that why we're seeing now is is just the death throes. And so uh, up to a couple of months ago, I was saying within two years, there won't be anything left, period. Right. Not even a whale. But I'm going to revise that to less than a year because of what I'm seeing. There was 337 whales in Chile uh-huh. recently. Uh-huh. There was 200 in uh, in New Zealand in um, April of this year that uh-huh. I never heard about. And then there was just, you know, there's only supposed to be eight along North America, and we got 43 that we know about. Deaths of whales, and but all the other species. They're reporting species. eight, and you've got forty-three. That's the actual count. Yeah, but it's normally I probably said that wrong. It was eight was the normal you would expect to find on a bad I see, year I see, dead I see. whales, and we've already got forty-three. All but right. the pictures I got from the coastline of the whales, they were all emaciated. They're dying. They're they starving to death. Years. They're yeah. starving yeah. to death. And the sardines failed three years in a row. But we know now that uh, the like you say the mountain. The mountains lost their inventory of snow and, and blue ice and that cold yeah. water. And so all the rivers and lakes and estuaries have failed this year. The salmon don't have never, what well, was left there couldn't make it up the river. And so that's the end of her. She's done. And this is really frightening for anybody, I'm sure. And we didn't do this ourselves. This is the industry won't let us try to stop what's happening and that they have withheld every aspect of it and attack Jeff and Yoshi and everybody else out there that would dare ask even a simple question of you sure there's nothing really extra going on at Fukushima. And so it turns out that uh, they knew what was going on. We, you know, now when we look at the science as we went way down the hole, the science was evident originally, mm-hmm. but they hid it all away on purpose. Uh-huh. It got leaked out. And now, and now they don't want blowback. Now they don't want anybody to know what they've done. Now they can't look their own loved ones in the face when they talk about Fukushima because they have to tell that same lie that is going to get them uh, exposed over the next year or two. Because like we're nothing compared to what's coming. When this planet starts to wake up over this year and there's nothing left, yeah, they're going to drown us out with all the, the rage we're going to hear. People really will f- are losing it right now and are going to lose it. They need a, They need someone to point a finger at, and it's not going to be hard to find out where that finger is going to get pointed. It's not going to be at me or you, Jeff. It's going to be at these people, and it's yeah. not going to be any fun to be them, no? No, it's going to be you, Vic. It's yeah. going to be Woods Hole. It's going to be UC Berkeley, Department of Nuclear Engineering or Nuclear Sciences or whatever you want to call it, who has uh funniest thing, not published the results of kelp watch 14 made no mention of it whatsoever so obviously the results were far worse than they thought or they would have easily put it out so yeah these are some of the people and then i would include uh the so-called president of this country who is supposed to lead it and is the certainly 
uh, most visible figurehead of our safety and our protectors, supposedly, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, which has never held one news conference to discuss radioactivity, but yet is monitoring the ocean.